Hi Karen, this dovetails really well in the video I'm just about to make on still life and perspectives. This can be t this can be changed really easily for you. <coughs> First thing to do is give, give yourself a huge pat on the back. That might seem a bit strange until you see the perception of the duality of this reality. So there may be uh, what day? Saturday, isn't it? So yeah, Thursday it rained all day, which affects the solar power, and I can take the negative stance on it. I was able to do a few bits, it's ever so windy at the moment, it's sort of intermittent rain. Um, but the point of it being, I could take the negative view of, oh fuck, it's raining, that's going to affect solar power, ability to make videos, ability to communicate, and so on and so on. But at the same time, it, it, it's been a, a beautiful experience the last two, three days with manifest, manifesting. I've got three testimonies I can give to this. This would be rather long and convoluted if I explain in a voice mail, but I'll put it, actually I'll make it into a video for you. Um, that's probably the easiest way. But yeah, so give yourself a pat on the back. The reason I say this is we're in a realm of duality. Now, if you can start seeing patterns by comp comparing one thing to another, a different picture emerges. Now, the picture that I think you'll agree, probably agree with this, those that are walking a spiritual path or who are at various stages of questioning the reality around them, go through some pretty un unpleasant experiences. So what you've got at the moment, it's an unfolding story. Um, who is it? What is it? It is, it's a, it's an unfolding story. So at the moment, you've got the equivalent of the rain cloud. So picture in your mind a half circle. Now at the bottom, you've got a straight line. So right in the middle of that is your marker. Now that, you can put a, imagine you put a pin in in the middle, upright, so it's at 90 degrees to that straight line. There's your center marker. Um, you've lost Mickey. You've experienced true love, but you've lost Mickey. Now, if you come from the other side and look at it, and you, you, if I found that kind of love again, it, obviously not with Mickey, but it, in, a, in a different character, there may have been things about Mickey you found a little bit annoying, and it may be that the universe will present to you someone where those things you found annoying about Mickey aren't there. It may come with a whole new, whole uh, subset of little things they do that you don't particularly like that. Who knows? That's starting to go off on a tangent there. But that's all you got to do is just hold that feeling. Imagine what it, that's the key word, imagine what it, how, how you would feel. Ask yourself, how would you feel because this is a huge lesson and you can't bring the, you can't bring something from it, it's, you've got to, I think you've got to do is play the part of the one that's laying on the couch, play the part at the same time of the psychologist and also playing the part of an observer. Let that lower conscious that's really feeling all the negativity express itself. You can just do this in your mind, don't even have to say it out loud. So you're listening to your lower conscious, so you're basically fractalizing yourself. So you, you now listen from the perspective of the psychologist, and then you also observe the psychologist and the lower conscious. That's quite an interesting thing, but yeah, just 
you've had the experience, so you can draw on the experience of, of, of that feeling. Don't put any expectations. Just say to yourself, how would I feel? Don't try and picture another person either. Um, just leave it fairly loose and just the universe will respond because it, it is totally interactive. So the, we're basically magnetic. So the energy and the frequency that you're radiating out will draw towards you something that will now have to match your frequency. So if you're feeling that's going to draw more of that towards you. So it's putting it in a box, in a, like a little Pandora's box, putting it in a cube. This is circling the square, not squaring the circle. So you contain these things. You don't deny that they exist. You acknowledge that you've got these feet, but then you overcome them, overcome them with rain cloud. What will then follow? Okay, it might be a bit of rain. But then what follows is blue skies and sunshine again. It's a repeat pattern shown by nature. We're, oh yeah, happy new year, as it were, but we've now entered the Chinese new year of the wood dragon, which is hugely symbolic of drawing on the power of nature um, in conjunction with the wisdom of the, the, the dragon, which represents the spirit. So it's a coming of the heaven upon earth, it's air and earth, the two two elements instead of this continuous battle of between fire and into. It's um it's like people who say they've got stage fright. Well when you realise that the whole world is a stage you can't step off of it and no matter what you do or don't do you'll project out a certain way of being that others will see you in a certain way so the entire time we are all acting so we are all on the world stage i acknowledge that but I'll, I'll be damned if i'm going to accept this script which is always the same script as the path of self-destruction so it's like i am taking that script. um it's what i discussed um about making a, a covenant within yourself a promise to yourself that you draw the line in the sand and say, right, these are the boundaries from now on. And what doesn't serve me is not coming into my world. That could lead on to a huge topic. Um, <coughs> it is in a discussion about manifesting and the, the, the person involved was stopping themselves manifesting because every time they we're trying to manifest something better for themselves, like a, a slightly bigger house. Something on those lines. The thought would come to head, well, I can't do that. I feel guilt, guilt because of, what about the children? What's happening to the children? But that leads to then to the question of, well, what as an individual can I do to change things? And the answer is lead by example. So show that manifesting can work, how this reality is far from what we've been told it is. So now in that case, you don't see that pinpoint marker in the middle as I can't do this because of the children. It's now I'm doing this for the children. So that now becomes a positive driving force rather than seeing it from a perspective of a, of a negative polarity. And that's a, a game changer. That's the amazing thing. This reality doesn't change one bit it looks exactly as it did what does is the subset of the people we come into contact with um the general feeling and that is what, what it comes down to the general feeling at, at, from the perception of this reality will, will change in a very positive way so it, it's pretty amazing what what's come these last three days. Sorry, this is turning out rather long. Um, so yeah, if you can sort of just hold that feeling and just sit back and then watch, watch the magic unfold. Don't try and think it through because that will start interfering with the process where the universe will try and ma match the frequency. That's saying about we are our own worst enemy, man 
destroys Earth is another one. Uh, man destroys the world. Which is true from the perspective of if you just put out a wish in a virtual post-it note to the universe in a feeling, which is what it communicates in, it will match that frequency. But if we then start thinking and problem solving, you're putting out an electrical signal which is interfering with the magnetism. So we don't draw towards us the very thing that we really want, really wish for, you see. Um, that's basically how it all works. 